What's going on everybody? My name is Jason. I work at All Out Bikes. I've been doing this for 29 years and we are seeing a lot more electric bikes now. Uh, they're everywhere and we're starting to get more and more of them in here for repairs. So today we've got a Polarna. Never heard of this company, uh, but uh, the customer that brought it in, he actually bought this because he rents them out. He bought like six of them, and uh, he actually has a couple of them out of order right now. Okay, so there are two types of systems here um, for the multi-speed rear hubs. Actually, there's more than uh, one, because there's internal and, and such. So there's two types of systems for the external shifting. There is a cassette, which is what this is, and the gears actually slide onto a splined driver, or there's a freewheel where the gears themselves thread onto the uh, hub. This one being the cassette typically is better. Uh, the only problem is when you pedal, the gears turn, the cranks turn, but the wheel does not go anywhere. So we need to figure out what's going on with that. Um, I've never had one of these do this so I don't know what I need to do so we're gonna kinda go through this together I'm hoping that the free hub body just slides off and I can take the old one off of the old wheel and put it onto uh, this one worst case scenario we have to open up the hub I have no idea what I'm gonna be getting myself into so we're gonna be doing this together so if you ha actually have one of these uh, Polarna M6s, uh, then it should be a, a cassette, and these are going to be the steps that you need to do. Now, the first thing that you want to do is you always want to cut the zip ties on the power cable, and you want to actually unhook the power cable before you remove the wheel. If you remove the wheel without doing that, the problem is you're trying to hold up the weight of the the wheel and you're trying to find a tool to to cut the zip ties and you don't want to damage the the uh, the power cable uh, for this so we're gonna go ahead and remove this now there's typically a zip tie here and here but for some reason those are missing uh, I just normally cut those off and then you just unhook this wire Okay, you want to pull the plug straight off, uh, no twisting or anything like that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually remove the little rubber boot that's over the nut here. And there's another one on the other side. We're going to put that in a safe place. This is typically a 18 or a 19 millimeter wrench. It looks like it's probably an 18. So... Oh wow, that was loose. Let's make sure there's nothing else that's going to be in the way. So this wheel should just drop right on off. Okay, that side's undone. Typically you want to shift it to the to the smallest gear. I'm already undoing this and it should be fine. We're going to loosen up the nut. This hang, um, guard comes right off. And the wheel should come right off. Um, sometimes there's a, uh, a, a, a plate with a bolt through there that you need to undo. There is, there's not one on this. So we're just going to kind of work it until it comes off. Okay, now let's go to the table. We need to kind of get all this off. Get the nut off here and the washer. It'll go right over the wire. Remember which order all of this is in. 
make sure you put it back the same way. Okay. All right, we need to take off the cassette next. Okay, so I am using a park tool. Uh, let me see, an FR5 cassette tool. I've got, you're going to need a chain whip or something. This one I'm, is a Bursman tool, so I like this one because it just kind of clamps onto there and it's just kind of cool. So we're going to slide this tool on there. We're going to get our adjustable wrench and just kind of break this free. Hopefully it's not too tight. It's not too bad. It's supposed to be like 40 newton meters. Now this is what, what I'm talking about. See, see how it just slides right off? So that is a cassette. This is a free hub body. Okay. Now we're going to loosen up this nut right here. Should be a 17. And I'm going to get my adjustable wrench. And there's two flat spots on the axle right here. And I'm going to do the adjustable wrench to hold onto the axle. Break this free. Okay. Okay, remove the nut. Keep track of it. Okay. All right. So, since it's not just sliding off, it's probably secured inside of this. So, what we're going to need to do is, I guess, uh, undo the plate here, which is not what I wanted to do. Um, back in a second, I've got to get a screwdriver. All right, let's unscrew these. I'm going to just break each one of these free. This is a number two screwdriver, meaning that it's not too big and not too small. It's not fitting in that. Phillips, or Phillips very good, but it broke it free. Okay, one more screw. Okay, um, now I don't know if this threads on or if it just slides off. Okay. Um, you may want to turn away from this.
There we go. Okay. Okay, so what we've got here is the free hub body is attached to this plate. It's not threaded on there. It's not... Well, it is kind of glued. There's a... There's some sealant on there to keep water out. So this is threaded right here. And what's happened is the free hub body has stripped out the threads. Okay. This is really interesting looking. Now this motor is still good, so I need to be very careful. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go find the other wheel and I'm going to take this plate off and we're going to install it onto this one. Okay, so we have this gear right here, which is supposed to be good, our free hub body. So we're going to take the cassette off of this because we want to keep the chain and the cassette the same on this because due to um, wear, if you put a worn out chain on a new cassette or vice versa it can uh, cause problems but well, that was already loose okay let's okay. uh Break this free. Okay. This seems to be going faster. Break these free. Okay. Let's try something a little different. 
Uh, well. Let's see if we can pry this up a little bit. There we go. So here's here's this one right here. We're going to put this onto the other wheel. Now I do want to just take a moment and I want to kind of get a good close look at this. This is a This is actually now. This is actually much simpler looking than I expected. I actually like how it comes apart. There's the little computer board right there. I don't want to touch it, um, but. Uh, this is the one with the bad motor. Okay, so it's not supposed to go. So, very interesting. Let's get that other one put back together. Ooh, let's pull this out. Ah, oh, looky there. Oh, that is interesting looking. It's got some planetary gears here, and they're plastic. I expected them to be aluminum. You know, this is actually not that bad because uh, plastic gears are going to be quieter than metal gears. Um, however, longevity-wise, the plastic is eventually going to either break or strip out. Look at that. That is actually really cool. Huh. And see the... The gears on the inside there that the planetary gears actually go against. Okay, I need to go real quick and get some uh, some sealant, some caulking to uh, weatherproof this motor. Back in just a second. Okay, so we're going to wipe this down. We're going to clean it up really good. And you want to use some rubbing alcohol or some type to uh, clean the surface area here for whenever we put the, uh, the sealant on there. So, okay, so I've got my cleaner here. We're going to clean the edges here. We're going to clean the outside here. Actually, I guess it's still the inside. There's hair inside of there. That's black, long hair. That is from... I don't know if you can see it. That's That came all the way from China. So somebody left a bit of themselves in there. So we're going to put a thin coat of sealant on there.
That stuff is drying quick. Okay. Let's go ahead and put this on real quick. Gonna go ahead and screw this in. These screws have blue Loctite on them. The other screws don't. I like the idea of the blue Loctite. Now I'm just going to go around and just tighten it up a little bit more and a little bit more until they stop. Okay, I'm starting to see a little bit of that sealant squishing out. Is what we want. Okay, and then we're just going to give it a little bit of a special torque spec. Click. 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 Okay. Now I'm just going to get this paper towel and we're going to wipe off the excess sealant. Got to look good for the customer. Boy, that stuff dries quick. I think I am happy with how this has turned out. Okay. We're going to install our nut. Snug this down. We don't need to make it super tight because it's at the end of the threads there. Let's install, let's see, that one 
was the first one. This one was the second one. Okay, so there's one spline in here much bigger than the rest and you actually want to line up the bigger part right there and if you really wanted to do things right you always put a little bit of grease on these splines helps keep it from corroding and allows you to take it off easier in the future okay we're going to line up the thick or the big spline and being that I just lined it up, it should just slide on very quickly. Uh, big spline. Where's the big spline? There it is. And I do like to use torque specs, but I don't have a torque wrench that'll fit on this with this wire just snug we are now ready to install this wheel onto the e-bike we're going to put these washers back on the same way that's on the other side. Put some grease on the threads on this other side. You really do want to put like a grease or an anisease on these threads because it does help them last longer. Wow, somebody's been using a pair of vice grips on this nut. It wasn't me. Tell you what, sometimes it's a struggle to get these wheels back into the e-bike. Do not forget to put the guard back on. Okay, now lots of times to get the wheel all the way into the dropout, you actually have to put it onto the ground to make sure that it's all the way in. So I'm going to loosen this up on both sides. Okay. Put some pressure on there and then tighten it up.
did not sound good. Well, if it's doing 27.6, it's a little faster than what's legal. 28.3. 29, 29, okay, North Carolina law, these are not supposed to go over 25, let's see what it does under its own power. Looks like it stops at 30. Go to an easier gear. Look in both ways and go. Loud, loud, loud. Alright, we're just going to use just the throttle. And let's see what the top speed is on uh, a slight uphill. This motor's loud. Uh -oh. given an error 21. It just died. No. Let's turn it off and then turn it back on. Nothing. I killed it. That did not turn out quite as expected. Um, actually, I'm not totally surprised because what we were doing was we were combining two old electric motors to try to make one good electric motor. And it's just like buying a, 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 an engine from the junkyard for your car. Uh, just because you buy it from the junkyard doesn't mean that it's actually any good. You don't know until you actually get it put all together uh, that you find out if you got a good deal or not. But anyway, if you enjoyed the video, if it was helpful at, in any way, please leave me a big thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to tell your friends. Uh, check out some of the other videos on the corner of the screen. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.